One of the key aspects that I always appreciated about Warframe was weapon diversity. If you think about it, there's basically something for almost any type of player. There's sniper rifles, shotguns, rifles, pistols, there's big boom grenade launchers, there's plasma balls, flamethrowers, even heavy duty guns that drop from the sky and launch metal rods. Essentially, if you can think about it, Warframe probably has it. But indulge a selfish curiosity of mine. Which one of you asked for another status sniper rifle? Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this mastery rank 13 primary weapon, the Sporofrix. As per the usual, I'm gonna have a cheap build, something affordable that most tenors should be able to build. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach. I like to take my time and explain whatever I feel is necessary for newer players. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please. Bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Sporofrix. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Sporofrix is a sniper rifle, my friends, and this is the sniper scope you're gonna be getting. Unfortunately, you only get one zoom level, 2.7x and 50% headshot damage. That is the scope bonus. From what I understood, initially this weapon was supposed to have two zoom levels that was supposed to be a 3.5x with 100% headshot damage, but apparently that one didn't make it into the final weapon. Let's say that you don't enjoy these graphics on the scope, right? You can turn them off, you go escape, options, interface, scroll all the way down at the bottom and you can turn it off right here with use sniper scopes. Now in this case, <laughs> there is an somewhat added benefit to the scope. Take a look at this. It jiggles. See that? It jiggles not when you fire, it jiggles when you get a headshot. No headshot, no jiggle. So that's the way you know you got a headshot. Even on the explosion thing, right? If it does manage to get a headshot, it will jiggle like so. The minimum combo is gonna be free and the combo delay is gonna be two seconds and that's pretty much it for functionality. This is a projectile based attack, I'm not sure if you guys can spot that and the projectile flight speed is pretty good. There's this razor blitz things that explode after 0.9 seconds after they make contact with an enemy or with a surface and that's pretty much it. Let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity 60 out of 60, and if your Sport of Freaks comes with only 3 out of 30 jumper to actions, plug in that Oro King Catalyst, double that mod capacity. From my humble point of view, we didn't need another status sniper rifle, and I wouldn't go out of my way to fully build the Sport of Freaks. You can pay 20 plat to have one installed, you can grind one from Nightwave, you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie, and you can also uh, get an Oro King Catalyst as a possible or guaranteed reward from some events in Warframe. My weapon has been format a total of 5 times, this is what I recommend for you guys as well. If you wanna build a Sport of Freaks, you can get away with something like 3 to 4 V symbols or Madurai. The weapon Plexerus or Excel slot is worth unlocking on this one because you can use lethal momentum or better said terminal velocity with 60% projectile speed. A lethal momentum is the same thing but only for secondaries. So it will help considering this is a projectile based attack. Also it increases the falloff, you saw that? If you want to kill targets from further than 400 meters away, this increases the falloff starting at 640 meters and ending at 960. The accuracy of course is going to be 100 just like any sniper rifle. Heavy caliber on this one, weirdly enough, even though it is a projectile based attack, kinda works. Allow me to show you exactly what I mean. And this is the reason why it's best to test even though theoretically you know what will happen, it's always good to test. Let me show you 25 meters with heavy cal. 23, 24, 25. That's not horrible. You see that? The multi-shot resulting is a little bit way off the crosshairs, but I believe that within 25 meters, heavy caliber for this one is somewhat usable. You know when it's not usable anymore? Well, if you want to go for like this, this is going to be 64 meters to the target, and some shots will be landing off the target. So bear that one in mind. Now back to the stats of the weapon. You guys ready for this one? Critical chance and critical damage. 1% crit chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I thought for a second that perhaps the Sporofrix has some sort of a cool gimmick or perhaps that AoE Cloud has a different critical chance, but no, this is legit. 1% crit chance with a free... <laughs> with a 3.0 critical multiplier. So bonus critical chance effects such as Arcane Avenger, Harrow or Kavat Puff will work very well on the Spot of Rakes. That's the highest critical multiplier tied with the Rubico and the Rubico Prime. It's really fantastic. Pity about that low critical chance. So yes, you guessed that this one is a status sniper because the Comorex wasn't good enough apparently. Fire rate of 1.8, magazine very nice of 9 and a reload time of 2.7 seconds. Now for a sniper rifle the magazine is rather large and I think this one kind of runs competition weirdly enough for the Volcar Wraith. But there you go, trigger semi and the damage, let's have a look. You got impact puncture and slash, and this is the projectile physically making contact with a target. Also notice the damage. This is pretty high base damage. I think of all the sniper rifles in the game, only the Lanka has better base damage than this. Gotta think about the Lanka Vandal, don't ya? Now this is the radial attack or that little cloud. The delay is 0.9 seconds, the area is 1.7 meters and the fall off is only 10% which is fantastic. It's got slash and viral by default which is fantastic, right? You can mod the weapon for something else. Cool, so you can get viral heat and corrosive maybe on the weapon. Well, that is an idea but I'll show you exactly why it's not a fantastic idea. So let's check out a standard build, shall we? And we got damage with serration, multi-shot with split chamber and vigilante armaments, critical chance and critical damage combo. No, not really, not in this case. You can go critical damage, not a bad idea, but you're gonna need bonus critical chance effects such as the ones mentioned earlier. Target acquired, however, becomes all the more important. We even have heavy caliber on this one and I'll show you with heavy caliber and without heavy caliber, you get to the side. Again, it's kind of weird that this one, even though it is a projectile based attack, it kind of works with this mod. Rifle aptitude becomes more important. This one was buffed at the start of 2020 with the status changes, 90% status chance, and of course we got all the 260, 60 uh, mods forming viral damage. Why didn't you do corrosive? I'll show you why I didn't do corrosive in a second, but first, this is the base build. I'm recommending you check out what it can do. And we're gonna go for the same corrupted heavy goons, level 120 as per the usual. My friends, I do have uh, whatchamacallit on, uh, heavy caliber, so I'm gonna hit my target still 33 meters, something like so. Look at that. I got two slash procs on the target and four vital procs after the detonation of the AoE effect, and that is a true blue one-shot, my friends. You got two slashes, five vitals, that's not gonna be enough to kill the target. Sometimes it will one-shot, and sometimes it won't. Basically, it depends how lucky you got with your proc. So, do you understand what we're looking at? right now. This is essentially... <laughs> oh god. This is essentially the Hunter Munitions experience, but without critical chance and without actually using Hunter Munitions. This is the Hunter Munitions experience through status, not through crit and the actual mod. I... I'm gonna... I'm gonna abstain from commenting on that one for now. So this is the kind of performance you can expect. Look at that. Shot on the target. Ed Varos 1 slash A hey, Mama 17,000 bleed on that one. So again, it really depends how lucky you get with your procs. Heavy Galber kinda works. Again, I think you can go for this one. Now allow me to show you why it didn't go for Corrosive. I'm gonna put it on right now. Is a status sniper, yes, it's a status sniper. But take a look at all the status I got, 164.3% ain't that fantastic, mama. What, I'm trying to look on the bright side over here. You guys should try it too, definitely try it. Um, yes, let's go with corrosive. In order to form corrosive on the weapon, it's a very simple task. You take off rhyme rounds and you go with high voltage. The problem with adding corrosive to the weapon is the fact that I get one more element that can proc, which is not slash or viral. In order for me to get somewhat consistent one-shots, I'm gonna have to focus exactly on getting those two procs, and now I will be getting less one-shots than before. Allow me to repeat the test, and I'm gonna give you an option for heavy caliber in a second as well. There we go. This is gonna be, what, to the target? 26 meters. I think this is uh, decent. One shot on the target, that's gonna be two slashes, it's gonna be a one shot from the viral and the corrosive, absolutely bloody fantastic. One shot on the target, keep in mind that sometimes these targets are affected by the AoE nuke as well, from the cloud. But as you can see, you will be getting, mathematically speaking, less one shots than before. You can go for a build such as this if you wanna have corrosive on it as well. 
Another idea. Let's say that you really don't want to use Heavy Caliber because you're Mr. Sharpshooter and you kill your targets 5 kilometers away because you're that good, right? And you don't want to play Counter-Strike for some reason. Oh, whatever. Uh, let's say you can go for another element, right? You take off Heavy Caliber, Heat right now in Warframe, the most powerful single element you can get. So you can go for something like so. And now you got Still Vital and Heat on the weapon. Or you can just simply replace Vigilante Armaments. Here's another good idea that you can go. Well, good idea. That's an overstatement. You can go with plus slash mods. Adding slash to the weapon will allow you to proc more slash. Normally, I don't really suggest you use plus IPS mods because there's a little bit lackluster. That's just how it is, even after the whole status changes. But in this case, you might want to go for something like so, simply to increase the proc priority of slash. And then you go, you got. Vital together with heat and a little bit of slash. And then we're gonna be talking just a bit about ribbon mods. I know Vigilante Armaments doesn't have a lot of fans, but to be honest, that mod should really be on this weapon. You don't have a whole lot of options on a weapon that you can't directly mod for crit. You can only indirectly mod for crit. You gotta go for damage multi shot, that's your best ribbon as well. Damage multi shot with a harmless negative. There you go. As before, most one-shots will come with the initial build I showcased you, fantastic people. Riven Disposition for this one is currently set at only 1 out of 5, which means it's gonna be hard for you to get a Riven which is actually worth it. Again, damage multi-shot with a harmless negative. Just so you understand how low the values actually are, I'm gonna show you the Riven that I got. This is a loaner from a friend. I wanted to sink a whole lot of endo and make it usable. And then I realized it's kind of a fool's errand right now. So this is a double positive. It's not even a triple positive at this point. And you got 64 slash with 44 heat. I mean, Fang Fusillade alone gets you 120 heat. Again, if you're lucky enough to get damage multi-shot harmless, fantastic. If not, then well, basically not. So it's not really worth going for Ravens anyway. What else can we do to increase the damage of the weapon? Oh, you gotta have target acquired. Go for it. Definitely get yourself target acquired. It's not as expensive or as rare as it used to be. I mean, I got seven, so it shouldn't really prove all that difficult for you fantastic people. And again, I do try heavy caliber. I know having heavy caliber on a sniper rifle is a bit counterintuitive, a bit of an oxymoron. But on the other hand, so is a status sniper rifle. So, there you go. Back to our kettle of fish. We can bump up everything using Warframe buffs, and for that we can use Harrow. Yeah, this is probably what you guys were expecting. Harrow will grant me that critical chance that I do not have from the weapon for some reason. But first, I gotta fix the fashion. Of course. Oh man, I love the look. I will say this for the Sword of Rex. I really legitimately like the look. But if you're not into the whole icky gooey kind of infested look, you can change the skin with this one, the Almo Sniper skin. I believe this one comes from the... Deluxe Nova skin pack, so you can get something like so. Now, since Harrow will grant me critical chance, what I can do is bump up critical damage on the weapon, but not only critical damage. This is another thing that I can do. I can go with Hammer Shot now. Hammer Shot is a mod that got buffed at the start of the year. I think it was at the start of the year. Take a look at those stats on it, man. 60% critical damage and 80% status chance. But you need an oxymoron of a weapon like this one to actually make hammer shot completely worth it. Does that make any sorts of sense? I'm not entirely sure it does. So you can go for something like so. As for critical damage, we can go for standard vital sense and you can further amp it up if, you, if this is not enough for you. If you want even more critical damage than this, then you can go for something called... Hold on, where the hell was it? Bladed rounds, there we go. 120% critical damage when aiming for 9 seconds. It's not a terrible idea considering you got that base 3.0 critical multiplier. What are you gonna renounce though? Should you renounce one of the 60-60 mods? <laughs> From my humble point of view, nope, not really. We might as well drop heavy caliber in this case and go with a little bit of critical damage and vital sense. 8.4x critical multiplier. Absolutely bloody insane. If you want to go this route, really, really, really go this route, hardcore, then you might want to drop Rifle Aptitude as well and go Bladed Rounds. So much critical damage, mama. I love it. Yes. I love it too. I would have loved it more if this bloody thing had a decent base critical, multi critical chance, but there you go. Beggars can't be choosy. Corrosive projection when it comes to Grenier is still meta, you can go Deadeye as well. 
Dead Eye will increase the damage of your sniper shots by 52.5%. We're gonna go with corrosive projection as for Arcane's Arcane Avenger, even with Harrow, even in this circumstance, is still a good idea, but precision will not help us. What will help us is Arcane Rage R5 from the third Eidolon down on Cetus, just like Arcane Avenger. Keep in mind that Avenger grants its bonus to your primary weapon, to your secondary weapon, and to your melee as well. It's the most powerful offensive Arcane in Warframe, at least for my two cents. You can get a Sentinel as well and buff up the damage. We're gonna go with a Carrier or whatever else you guys want. Make sure that on your little Sentinel's weapon you have the Vigilante mods. Offense, Supplies, Fervor and Armaments. This will grant you that 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons even if the little Sentinel dies and never comes back to life you will still retain that bonus. So bear that one in mind. Finally, let's do it with Lord Harrow. We're gonna bump up the level to 150. Da 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 da. And pause the eye so they can hit me and I can get my buffs, like so. We're gonna activate Harrow's 4th ability, save everybody in your party and get many many thanks from everybody. <laughs> right, and his second ability will grant us fire rate as well as reload speed. Try to farm Harrow, I know the farm for him is a bit difficult, but trust me, you will love this outstanding Warframe. He is renowned and known as the Priest of Holy... The Priest of Holy Crit? Yeah, something like that. And you'll see why in a second. Take a look at that. You gotta get yourself a headshot. Look at that red crit, red slash. Beautiful. Didn't even get to see the bloody uh, number on that one. Take a look at that. 351,000 damage. Something along those lines. Absolutely bloody insane. And now we can actually play with it like a sniper rifle. I don't have heavy caliber anymore, so I gotta rely on my own aiming. Which, let's be honest, is not really all that fantastic. Did I get a headshot? I don't think I did. Wow, that was white damage. Gotta get it from all the way. They don't even know. They don't even know what's going on. Take a look at that slash, man. Absolutely freaking fantastic. If you manage to get a dead eye headshot, then it's gonna be a one shot on your target. Like so. And this is from 60 something meters away, my friends. So the Sporo Freaks can definitely pack a punch, especially if you're going for critical chance, bonus additive effects from Harrow or from Arcane Avenger or from your Kavat. You can also go with Lady Mirage Prime, but I think it's time to draw some conclusions. I did my best to review this weapon as objectively as I can. And you know what? Objectively, it can pack a punch. Objectively, it's an alternative to the Comorex. Perhaps you didn't like the Comorex. Perhaps you're bored of it, but you enjoy that style of sniper rifle for whatever reason. I'm not judging. So yes, you can definitely go for this weapon. But from a subjective point of view, and this is simply my feelings on the weapon, strictly me, it's mastery fodder. I don't see a point to a status sniper rifle. I thought the Comorex was a nasty experiment and they got it out of their system, but apparently not. I do not recommend this weapon. I do not see a realistic use case scenario for it. But if you want to go for it, there you go. That's the Sport of Freaks. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. But you can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.